Greetings, good people of YouTube. Do you know Euclidean circles? I'm guessing if you're a modular fan, chances are pretty good. Um, though perhaps you haven't seen one that looks quite like my one. Um, if you do not know, however, very briefly, um, what it does is you have 16 LEDs here representing 16 beats and you can, the colored LEDs are triggers that will fire on those beats. So we'll punch in a BPM, a tap tempo to get that running. And you can see here that each time this is hitting one of the pink or yellow LEDs, it's triggering the bass drum which we can switch on here yeah, and you can hear that and by twisting the knob here you can add in more beats and we can add in five but five will not divide nicely into 16 so we get this super cool little module really fun for playing around with rhythm stuff now I uh, actually really enjoy using it to control uh, melody patterns and to create interesting melody patterns. Um, so that's what I want to demonstrate in this video today because I had a couple of fun little ideas of what to create with it. Um, first things first, the, uh, I'll just quickly talk about the patch which I've got running here. Um, I have uh, my clock divider, which is also doubling as my clock source, as you saw, I just tapped in the tempo um, that is going into Euclidean circles, and I've got that running into my Endorphins Queen of Pentacles for drums, um, and altogether that is creating a traditional uh, four on the floor pattern, as so. Alright. This will give us a um, reference for listening to the melody patterns later on. Um, also, I have uh, a bass drone, which is just droning in C. Um, this is basically just going to give us a, uh, yeah, it's give us the tonic for our um, C minor melody that we're going to be working with. Alrighty, so that's rhythm and bass, and then for the actual melody, um, first off we've got, um, as I say, our clock sequencer, which is, uh, okay, first that's running into Euclidean circles, which we've got set up here, in fact I'm just going to set that to 8 out of 16 beats, so it's going to be a very standard thing. That trigger is coming into the sequencer here. Um, the sequencer is playing uh, C, G sharp, B flat, and F, very basic little rhythm, and that's going into plats here. Um, and I'm using um, the internal gate, uh, or a low pass gate, sorry, um, so I don't have to use a VCA or anything like that. Um, and oh yes, I've totally forgotten to mention that yes, the sequencer is going into my Penrose quantizer, which I've got set up for a C minor scale. Um, yes. Now um, that should sound like this. Yeah. And if we add in our bass drone and see. And then we add in our rhythm. You can hear that this is a <laughs> very quickly becomes repetitive and, and dull. Um, the, the melody, I mean. But if we then change this, suddenly things get more interesting. And because I don't have this running uh, with the clock, it's 
running in step mode. So each time it receives a trigger, it'll move to the next step. And so Euclidean circles is uh, telling it when to move and suddenly that pattern gets a little more interesting. You can do it again. All right. So. Compared to that, now we can turn it down. So simple sequences can get a lot more interesting. Now, mute that again. The next step on this, you could say, is um, instead of using a sequencer, why don't we use an LFO uh, running into our quantizer and uh, yeah, and we'll generate some interesting melodies with that. So first off, we need to move our trigger in into the pen row so it doesn't move around when it's uh, going up and down with the melodies and then next we need to add in an LFO and we want to use we don't have to use it um, but for this demonstration we're going to take our clock source which I've actually pre slowed down to a quarter of its speed and we're going to run that into our LFO and sync uh, our LFO with our clock source. Then we need to take the sine wave out. Um, I mean, whichever wave, I'm using sine wave. And we're going to put that into shades, which is um, a mixer, attenuverter, attenuator, and offset generator. So now we've got our LFO coming in here being attenuated to nothing so turn that up here now the quant uh, quantizer the pen rows won't work with negative voltages so we'll add in a bit of offset and there we go now what this should do is um the, yeah the offset will get mixed in and um give us more of a uh more of that up and down waveform to work with. So, if I haven't got this correct. Yeah, okay, and we've got it playing a little melody here. So we'll add back in our rhythm section. And uh, this gets a little more interesting because it'll start cutting into different parts of that, that waveform. So we've got a couple more notes that start coming and things get a little more interesting. And what's quite fun about the um, this whole setup with uh, voltages and stuff as you get a little bit of wandering, a little bit of slight millisecond uh, out of sync timing and stuff I guess and so basically that, that ends up giving you a few interesting well, like little discrepancies in your note pattern so then sometimes they'll play different notes in there which is kind of cool. Back to our original little melody and then Go back to this and of course where are there other features we can muck around with we can start moving that up a bit or let's increase the amplitude first so we get a few more notes in there and you can see I've left it going well, I don't know if you can see a little bit into the negatives there so we just get a few of those C's playing to sort of keep us based around that tonic there That's cool. And then what we can do is also we say, okay, then let's let's move that offset a bit.
it out. There's a little discrepancy in our pattern there. Okay, and then once we get sick of doing that, let's bring it back to sort of roughly where we were. Um, we can then slow down our LFO. So currently we've got it, um, yeah. the, the BPM divided by four, well it's divided by six. We could slow it right down to eight, but six gives us a little bit more, yeah. So it's starting to go direction polymeter. Then of course what we can do, let's uh, yeah, that one's fine. So now we could say is, okay, let's move around the start point. And we add a little more amplitude. And so we better with a few less beats. And of course, why don't we remove some of the blue dots? So yeah, that's my little trick with the Euclidean circles. I uh, hope somebody finds it helpful and makes some, some cool tracks with it. I might incorporate that into my next thing I come up with. Who knows, we'll see. Got a lot of new modules to play with, so. Well. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, see you in the next one.